And so as you sense the breath now coming and going, your body, breath, and mind all arrive for the practice of yoga. Please join your hands together at your heart. Notice what happens for you when you breathe deliberately and when you also deliberately lengthen your spine. What happens for the quality of your attention? Like how much more present is your mind? And we will chant together. You can sing with me if you like. Asutoma Satgamaya. Om. Asatoma Satgamaya. Tamasoma Jyotia Gamaya. Mrityodama Amritam Gamaya. Asatoma Satgamaya. Tamasoma Jyotia Gamaya. Mrityodama Amritam Gamaya. Om Asatoma Satgamaya. Tamasoma Jyotia Gamaya. Mrityodama Amritam Gamaya. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Hari Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari Om With your exhale, you may bow your head to your heart. Release your hands. Please open your eyes. And if you're sitting in a chair or on the floor, either way, you can stay as you are. I'm sitting on a little physio ball, just to let you know. That's why it moves sometimes. And we're gonna practice a little pranayama to awaken the upper back spine, but we have to start with the breath, first third of the pelvis, mid third of the torso, and then up into the upper back and heart. So let's just get a sense of what that's like for you right now as you start your practice. So take the arms out to the side, turn your palms face up, and inhale just the first third of the breath. That's in your pelvis. Then inhale the middle third of the breath that's in your mid body. And then inhale the upper third of the breath. And as you reach up, let your breath come up into your heart. And then exhale, sweep your arms out to the sides. Exhale thoughtfully, tone your low belly as you get to the end of the exhale. Let's do that one more time. So you're gonna inhale just the first third of the breath. So from the pelvic floor to your waistline. Then inhale, middle third of the breath, rib cage, kidneys, diaphragm. Then inhale, the upper third of the breath, your heart, your shoulder blades, your collarbones. And exhale, press out to the sides of the room. Okay, so you have a little snapshot of what that's like for you, what your capacity is. Let's see about the flexibility in this region of your body so that when your inhale's coming up, it doesn't feel like it has to push up against some tension that you're holding here. So we're gonna do this with a little bit of support for the shoulders. Take your right arm up, please bend your right elbow, reach over and take your elbow with your left hand and do your best to lift up. And try to position your right arm so it doesn't have to push your head forward. And if it is pressing a little bit on your head, try pressing your head gently back into your arm. Make a tiny back bend of your thoracic spine and a very small bend sideways to your left. You may also turn your gaze to your right. And that'll change where your head and your arm are touching each other. So think of like a little back bend in the upper back on your right side and a little bit of a side bend. Inhale. And then exhale, open both arms, rotate your head to center. Let's try the other side. Okay, so left arm up, 
bend your left elbow, reach over to hold. Some of you have long arms so your elbow doesn't really run into the top of your head. Some of us have less long arms so this height and this height are nearly the same. And so when you reach like this, go ahead and turn your head to your left and slide in a little bit to your right. Good, yeah. And really think of like the upper left quadrant of the torso. Little bit of a back bend, little bit of a side bend. You want the breath to feel kind, but purposeful. And try to sense if the breath has permission to come up into the upper left chest, into your left shoulder blade or into your heart. And then exhale, bring that upright, release both arms. Okay, from where you're sitting, reach back to interlace your fingers, roll your shoulders back strongly, and you can even press your arms back. And then while keeping your shoulders back, turn your head as far as it goes comfortably to your right. And roll your left shoulder back as you do that. Imagine stretching the distance between your left earlobe and your left shoulder. They're moving away from each other, but also let the breath come up into your upper left chest. And then rotate your head to center, press your right shoulder back more enthusiastically and turn your head to your left. Imagine the distance from your right earlobe to your right shoulder. And imagine the breath comes up from beneath. So you still have your first third, middle third, then into the upper right chest and shoulder. And then exhale, rotate to center, release both hands and arms down. You tip your right ear towards your right shoulder, press the heel of your left hand down towards the floor. When you're tipping your head, be really deliberate that you actually are pressing out through the heel of your hand like this and taking it down. So you might feel some nerve sensations down the left side of your neck. This is not uncommon. Let's take the chin towards your right collarbone and up away from your collarbone. And keep your head to the side and just sense where do you have range of motion? Where does it feel limited? You can. Imagine lengthening from your left earlobe to your left shoulder. When you press out through the heel of your hand like this, you are lengthening a nerve pathway. So it's possible that your hand starts to tingle. That will not last forever. Do one more time, bring your chin towards your right collarbone. Now float your head up so you're gazing to your right, relax your left arm and bring your head to center and spend a few moments just noticing the left side of your face, the left side of your neck, your left arm, your left fingers. Now take the right hand and press out to the side so you got the heel of the hand like this and you're going to be taking it down so you're pressing from the heel of your right hand down towards the floor, tip your head to your left. Yeah. And then rotate so that your chin comes towards your left collarbone. And roll up, keeping your head sideways. Good. Yeah. And roll down. So what you come to notice in your own way there the distance from your right shoulder to your right earlobe. This might be different than on the other side. So give your full noticing to the sensations. Learning to observe, but also observing without judgment. And it's okay if you're astonished. You think, oh my God, I didn't realize that sensation was there. But we don't have to add the narrative of judgment. Next time you bring your chin down towards your left collarbone, go ahead and stay there. And then as you raise your head up, gaze to your left, release your right arm. Rotate your head to center and notice the two sides of your neck, the two sides of your face. And let's see how this one third, one third, one third breath is doing now. So turn your palms face up, take your arms out to the side 
And let's inhale first third of the breath, which is the pelvis. And inhale the middle third of your breath, your mid torso. And then inhale the upper third of the breath and see if you can lift your rib cage, let make a little more space under your sternum and your collarbones for the breath. And then exhale, press out and out. Roll your shoulders down, raise up through the crown of your skull. Let's do that one more time in silence. Inhale, one third. Second third. Upper third. Exhale. And then pause to notice the quality of your mind. So already you've had an influence on yourself in some way. The practice is influencing you. We're going to now come up to standing with a chair as one of our yoga props. And Susie, we can go to my other camera, which I think is turned on right now. Yeah. Okay, so I'd like you to have this chair. If you have a folding chair like mine, I'd like you to have it open. And we're going to put the chair to one side of the mat. So I'm going to move mine like this. And I will recommend that you have a blanket here for your knees, which are going to be momentarily touching the floor. We're going to just touch down for a few moments is what I mean by the word momentarily. Let me tie my hair back. So while you guys are getting set up, I'll tie this back so I can see you better. So we're going to be using a modified form of the sun salutation, including a pose that we call Anjane Asana, which is where we touch the knee down to the floor. And so to start, I want you to be able to step forward of your blanket like this, touch the chair for security, you know where your hands are going to be, place your index fingers and wrap the other three fingers around the edge of your chair, then step backwards into what we're going to call chair dog. So what's really important here for this morning's practice is let's notice if your breath can do first third, middle and upper third, having done the practice that we were just doing. You might be noticing the breath in the upper third of your torso, it's the last part of your inhale. See if you can sense it between your shoulder blades. Not just the front of the sternum and the collarbones, but can you sense your breath from the inside, even expanding your shoulder blades? So your breath does begin in the pelvis still, and then expands. Now press both hands down against your chair, lift your chest and your heart, look forward and step your right foot forward between the toes of the chair and using the chair for support, touch your left knee down. Root down through your tailbone and then shift your hands to your hips, press down against your hip bones and lift inwardly and upwardly so that you're getting the collarbones to rise here as well. And if you feel stable enough, now you're going to sweep the arms wide and try to go first third, middle third, upper third of the breath. Root your tailbone down and keep the left butt tone. Even though we're focusing on the breath being upwards, try to keep the tone of your left hip on the back side. And then lower your hands down and let's place both hands please on the chair seat. Now straighten your left leg slowly and press both hands into the chair seat itself. If you look at your blanket as a little hurdle, I'm going to have you lift your right knee up, lift the toes up, and then step backwards to plank pose. And in plank pose, lift the base of your skull, press down through both arms and see if the inhale could still begin first third, middle third, then the upper third, including the back of your heart. And then exhale, reach backwards into chair dog pose. Now press into your left toes and both hands 
and roll your right foot forward. A left exercise, press into your right toes and step your left foot forward. I'm not mirroring you and I, I got confused. So left foot forward, right knee down to your blanket. Take your hands to your hips, press down against your pelvis. So one way that we go inwardly upward in the pose is that we press outwardly downward. <laughs> so press your hands down against your pelvis to go inward, upward in the heart. And then raise your arms up, keep your tailbone rooting down. And as you tone the muscles at the back of your right butt, when you're doing that, try to keep your pelvis stable. So you go upwards and very slightly backwards, a little bit of a back bend in the heart in your upper back. And then when you exhale, lower your hands through Anjali Mudra back to the chair seat. And I'd like you to press firmly index fingers and thumbs, wrap your other fingers around. Straighten your right leg. Now stabilize your arms, gaze down between your thumbs, and pick up your left knee, your left toes, and step your left toes back to meet your right toes in plank pose. And check and see again. How is the breath? First third, middle third, and upper third of the breath. And then glide backwards with your exhale, chair dog pose. And notice what's happening in the quality of your breath and the experience you have with how your mind pays attention. Can you reflect on your experience, observing without judging or narrating or meddling with your experience. Now press both hands down against the chair seat again and lift your chest and heart to look forward and step forward with your right foot once more. This time we're going to use the crescent lunge. So keep the left toes lift up, grounded and your left heel lifted. Press firmly down with both hands against your chair. And as you tone your low belly, also tone your left butt and your right hamstrings. And then shift your hands to your hips. I'd like you to press down again, press down against your pelvis to go inwardly upward. And then raise both arms, first third of the breath, middle, upper third of your breath. So the lift you can make inside your body here with the breath is in um, connection with, in contrast to the grounding you're doing with the lower body. So if you think of your pelvis moving down, the tailbone being heavy, but also press your left butt muscles to be strong, your right hamstrings to be strong, your right heel and toes, left toes. From that base, you can imagine it's like when seaweed is grounded at the ocean floor, but it moves with the currents of the ocean. So from that base, you want your torso to feel like it can respond to the breath. Now when you next exhale, take the arms wide and slowly come to touch the chair seat. You should already feel like you have strength in the core of the body. So when you touch with your hands, you're adding to that strength. Press firmly down, pick up your right knee and your right toes and glide your right toes back next to your left toes. And reach this back to chair dog. Then lift your chest, look forward, and step your left foot forward over the blanket. So this is the base of your crescent lunge. Press firmly into both arms. Tone your low belly, your right butt, right toes left hamstrings, left heel. And then place your hands on your hips to press down. So you kind of go up on the inside, the inner body. Keeping your legs grounded, raise your arms, first third, middle third, upper third of the breath. When we ask you to rise up with the breath like this, Sometimes the mind forgets about the foundation. 
So check that you've got your right toes. The right butt muscles are working. Left hamstring. Your left heel and your left toes. And again, as if seaweed were grounded at the ocean floor, it has this opportunity to move with the currents of the ocean, just as you do with the currents of the breath in your body. And when you next exhale, sweep your arms wide. Keep your legs steady. You should already feel again like you've got some tone in the core of the body. Take your fingers and thumbs to the chair. Press firmly down and lift your left knee up. Lift the toes of your left foot and then glide your left toes back next to your right toes and reach back to your chair dog pose. Enjoy a deep breath into your low belly, mid back, and then the back of your heart. And then lift your chest, look forward. Step one foot forward between the chair and the blanket. Step the other foot forward between your chair and your blanket. Rise up to standing. And pause to reflect. So I'm going to ask you guys now to put a couple of blocks on your chair seats that are going to be there for you because it'll help you with a few poses that I'd like to do as a variation. So if you go like this and you put the chair, put the blocks at the back of the chair so they won't be in the way of your hands, but they will be there when you need them. Okay, we're going to do more of a formal sun salutation. Okay, so join your hands together at your heart. You can imagine you have a second pair of hands and it presses, they press down against your pelvis so that you are rooting from your hips to your heels. And then inwardly go upwards. And now let's inhale. Raise your arms, Ordva Hastasana. And exhale, tone your legs, bow forward to the chair seat, place your fingers and thumbs, be firm there, and step your left foot straight back. Energize your foundation. Rise up as you inhale. And exhale, arms wide. Keep the legs steady. Your left foot should still be toned. And press into both hands. Step back to plank pose. Reach back, downward facing dog pose. Look forward, step forward with your left foot. Inhale, rise, crescent lunge. And exhale to descend. You already should have strength in your foundation and in your core. This time, step backwards to plank pose. And then backwards to downward dog pose. Okay, now step your right foot forward between your blanket and your chair. Touch your left knee down. Inhale, rise up, Anjane Asana. Exhale to descend, place both hands firmly on the chair. Now straighten your left leg and tone your belly. And then right foot back, plank pose. Downward facing dog pose. Okay, left foot forward between your blanket and your chair. Touch your right knee down. Inhale to rise, Anjane Asana. Exhale, hands to your chair seat. Now make the core of the body strong as you straighten your right leg, step to plank. And then backwards to chair dog pose. And take a deep breath in, please. So we're going to keep tapping into the strength you have in your foundation and then in the core of the body. And the core is actually your pelvic floor, your transverse abdominis, your diaphragm, and these muscles called multifidi. 
On top of that core, you have these muscles called obliques, and then on top of that, muscles called rectus abdominis. So when you next exhale, lift your chest, look forward, step your right foot forward. So this is the base of your crescent lunge. You're gonna place the two blocks though under your hands here, so you're higher up at the start. So if you press down into both hands at both blocks right now, you should feel like you could almost make a cat pose of your spine. So the tailbone goes down, broaden your lower back, broaden your mid back, broaden your upper back. This is cat pose. Some of you are going to find that you're actually stretching your left hip flexors even more than you were before. So pressing down into both blocks. Keep your foundation steady and float up. So you're going to lift your mid torso, upper torso, heart, and collarbones. I'm going to ask you to roll down like you're doing cat pose. So keep the tailbone down and lower your arms, your head, your shoulders, round your upper back, mid back, lower back. Press into your blocks. This kind of strength here, I'm going to ask you now to transition like you're doing cow pose. Lift your heart, lift your collarbones, gaze forward. And so the torso goes to these variations, and that's getting us ready for where we're going. Please put the blocks aside and step back to plank. And then reach back to dog pose. And let's try the other side of the sequence. So float your left foot forward between your blanket and your chair. This is the base of your crescent lunge. Take the two blocks. Please press down against them again. Sorry that my chair squeaks. But when you press down like this, try to think of your cat pose. Cat pose so your tailbone goes down. The pubic bone does come up. You can broaden your lower back, your mid back, your upper back. And some of you are going to find out, oh, there's the hip flexors. They're actually stretching more than when your hands are on the chair seat. Notice also that your pelvis is almost ready for the rest of the pose to grow from the pelvis upwards. So now you're going to move your mid back, upper back, lift your heart, your collarbones, your eyes, and your arms. So kind of like seaweed in the ocean, we're going to glide back down. Keep your foundation strong. And when your hands add to the experience, you're not making up for something you're adding to. Now bring your heart forward like cow pose. So bringing the heart forward does not mean having the lower back become lazy or the low belly going into a hammock. And we'll put the blocks forward and step your left foot up to meet your right foot. Or right foot up to meet your left, excuse me. And rise up, Ordva Hastasana. And then hands to your heart. Notice what's moving in you. Now we're going to add a pose in called Parjva Kanasana, the side angle pose. So inhale, sweep your arms up. Energize your legs and exhale to come forward and down to your chair seat. Place your hands firmly. Step your left foot backwards and then your right foot backwards, chair dog. Okay, let's check the strength that we have here. So roll forward to plank. And then exhale very lightly, touch your knees down, but only very temporarily. Inhale, plank. Keep your arms straight and strong. Exhale your knees really lightly down. Inhale, plank. The strength I'm asking for here, as you exhale, touch your knees down. The strength you're needing in the belly here is strength that I want you to be able to have in the side angle pose. Let's do this one more time. Touch your knees really lightly down. And then inhale to plank. And reach backwards to your chair dog pose. 
Great. Now step your right foot forward between the blanket and the chair. Turn your left heel sideways on the floor and bring the block for your right hand under like this. Okay. Press firmly down into your right hand now and find the same strength of the belly. So I'd like you to root the tailbone, lift your pubic bone, press into your right hand and start rolling your left shoulder back. Let's imagine just for a moment, plank pose from your left foot up through your left leg, even the left butt, and then up through the left side of the belly. So your back waist is already broad. When you go to roll your shoulder open, there's no compromise. And then sweep your left arm past your left ear. Press firmly down into your right hand so the left side of your torso can kind of billow to open with the breath. Inhale one more time. Now please, without moving your pelvis or your legs, keep that steady. On the exhale, reach your left hand down to the chair so it's lower than your block. And inhale, raise your left arm up, side angle pose. Keep the whole body steady. And as you exhale, rotate only your upper thoracic spine, left shoulder. Keep your right arm strong. Touch the chair seat with your left hand. And inhale to open. As if you're turning the lid of the jar but the jar is stable. In this case, the lid is your upper thoracic spine, your shoulder blades, your collarbones, your head. Once more, keep your right arm stable. And last one. So when the right arm is strong here, as you bring the left hand down, it has to go past your right arm to get there, which means stretch the upper left shoulder blade. And then place this block, slide it forward. Two hands, pick up your left heel and step backwards. Heels to the other side. So step your left foot forward, turn your right heel sideways, bring the block in for your left hand. Place your right hand on your right hip, and as you strengthen your left arm, reach your tailbone down, lift the pubic bone up, and think of plank pose from your right leg up through your right hip and thigh, up into your torso, and then sweep your right arm past your right ear. And go inside the body, into the inner body here. I'll turn so I can see you still. So even though you're reaching long, don't forget to root down into your back leg. Go inside and have a sense. If you make the left arm stronger, the right hemisphere of the body can billow open. Because the breath inside has room to expand. Yeah. And let's imagine it again, like you're holding a jar stable, but we're gonna turn the lid of the jar. So you've got the right arm overhead, that's your inhale. And then exhale and bring just the upper thoracic spine, right shoulder, right arm, bring your gaze down, touch the chair seat if you can reach it. Then inhale to open that again. So you really are trying to keep everything stable as much as possible. So right leg, pelvis, low back, mid back, rotate through your upper thoracic spine. Inhale to open. And exhale to roll down. Keep your left arm strong. It makes it more difficult for your right hand to reach, but it requires your shoulder blade to participate. One more time, inhale to open. And then last one, exhale to roll down. 
Place your right hand on the chair seat. Scoot your block out of the way. And please step backwards to your chair dog. And then looking forward over your blanket, step your right foot up, step your left foot up, rise up to standing. And stand really still and quiet to feel, okay, what's happening now in your body, in your breath? It's possible you can have a sense that there's a downward rooting from your pelvis to your feet and an inward rising from your pelvis upwards in your inner body. Possible you'll feel other things as well, of course. So I'd like you to take a seat in your original position or on your chair. Because we're going to try that pranayama now and see what it feels like. I'm going to turn mine so I can see you. So take a seat on the front edge of your chair or sit on your blanket as you prefer to do for meditation. And let's just check and see what this experience feels like here. So what influence have we had? in this musculoskeletal region that's going to allow the breath to be even more welcomed. So take the arms out to the side and then try the first third of your breath, that is your pelvis. Little pause and then you do the middle third of the breath. Pausing. Now the upper third. And then exhale, float your arms out to the side. And let's try it again. Inhale, first third, and then we are pausing. Middle third. Upper third. Exhale. We are pausing between those movements of the breath. Even at the very top, we're pausing. Let's do it again. Inhale first. Middle. Upper. Exhale smoothly and without interruption. Once more, please. First third. Middle. Upper. Exhale. Rest your hands in your lap. Notice the quality of your mind. Notice that without any effort, your body will breathe you. Notice the feeling tone of your body. Now 
imagine your mind is watching how the seaweed is rooted at the ocean floor and seaweed would respond to the ocean currents. So right now, let's imagine that the ocean is very still. Your mind is seeing the ocean floor, the stillness of the ocean, the stillness of the seaweed. two blocks again um, and so these two blocks we're going to be placing your right foot up on the blocks and I will mirror you this time so let's do a stack of two blocks like this I have to back up so that I can see that on the screen so two blocks <laughs> like this okay yeah and then you can take your right foot out over onto the blocks. Look up through your spine, even the inner upper back spine. And then come slowly forward. Now everybody's going to have a different end range here when you come forward. And many of you know that my end range is like, um, like a panini machine, you know, like this. So you have to make this according to your end range. And I'm going to ask you when you come forward to think of the heart spine still lifting. So we aren't coming forward from the chin. We're not rounding the spine to come down. The head doesn't have to fall towards your right ankle. You might actually resist the feeling that you have to reach your foot by reaching back to hold the sides of the chair, set the shoulders back. Quite naturally for each of us, there's going to be an end range of flexibility in your body. So when you get to that end range, I'm going to ask you to be really reflective and not to judge your end range, but it should be somehow more. It is what it is. For those of you for whom it's an easeful reach, you could place your hands Past your right foot on your blocks. So long as your back doesn't turn into an armadillo, you're not acting like a, a turtle. The head is not also pushing the chin forward. What you could explore is that the arms or fingers can come down towards the floor. Keep the base of your skull lifted till the spine is long. And wherever your hands happen to be, walk them back up to your hips, please. And then root down so your hands can kind of encourage your hips to be more rooted into your chair. Rise up to sitting and take your right foot down and notice. Your body's gonna take care of something right there inside, like a housekeeping chore. That should be settling by now. So we're gonna do the other side. You can move the blocks over. Left leg up. Yeah, lift up through your heart. So the inner body's going up. And as you come forward, try to get a sense of the heart still rising, your chin not pushing forward. 
Listen for where your honest end range is. If you'd like, you can hold the sides of the chair and roll your shoulders back. So you can think of this as a, a practice of self-honesty. What is your actual flexibility here? For those of you for whom it doesn't distort your pose, it contributes but doesn't kind of distort it, you can reach your hands past your left foot on your block. Just keep the base of the skull lifted so the neck is long. And some of you might choose to place your fingertips on the floor. And I get a sense of the pelvis like the seaweed rooted at the ocean floor. And place your hands on your hips. And as you root down with your pelvis, roll your torso and your spine upwards. Release your left foot from the block and sit a moment. Notice what your body is doing right there. Now we're going to put the chair aside and come down for an unwinding practice that leads to Shavasana. So you can put the chair where you don't need it now. And then we're going to be using two blankets folded. I already have mine from yesterday's restorative class, so they, mine are here. If you don't have that option, you could roll up your yoga mat and use the yoga mat instead. If you don't have that option, if you've got only one mat and you're on a hardwood floor, you could roll up a bath towel, a uh, thick bath towel, so that you've got this little ledge. And the last option is, if you don't find it too uncomfortable, you can use the block under your pelvis instead of a cotton device. So when you lie down here, I would like your hips to be on the blanket. And your hips are elevated so that you have this sort of, we hope you have an easeful drop of your knees towards your chest. I'm going to ask you once you lie down and you get a sense like, okay, this is, that's a good place for me to be on the blanket or on your block. Then I'd like you to touch the feet down and for a moment, tuck each shoulder under. So that when you tuck them under, you have a feeling like, oh, there's the shoulder blade, it's tacked down to the floor. There's the shoulder blade, it's also tacked down to the floor. And you can then bring your knees up, let them drop in towards your chest. And because you tuck the shoulder blades under, when your knees come towards your chest, try lengthening the back of your neck. And keeping your right shoulder blade grounded Rotate your nose as far as it will go to your left. Do keep your right shoulder blade grounded. That's very important. So your right shoulder should feel Velcroed to the floor. We could say that. When you turn your nose to your left, the right shoulder doesn't come up. Breathe into the right side of your neck. And roll your head back to center. Tuck your left shoulder blade under, or keep it tucked under, and rotate your nose as far as it goes to your right. And keep the left shoulder down so you really got a sense of grounding at the back of your left shoulder blade. Left shoulder.
And breathe along the left side of your neck there. Keeping your knees in snug to your chest, roll your nose back to center. And then gently touch your feet down to the floor so you still have your hips elevated. And drop both knees just very slightly to your right, turn your nose to your left. The knees can choose to go further right so long as your left shoulder stays grounded, your left hip will likely come up off of the blanket. So press from your left butt muscles, the same ones you used before, to open the front of your left hip as your knees continue to glide to the right and lengthen from your hips to your knees. Please keep your left shoulder grounded. And then allow your left hip to roll back to the blanket. Gravity will help you with that. Bring your knees to center, your nose to center. Now let the knees go just slightly to the left. That's just a start. Turn your nose to your right. And as the knees go further left, squeeze your right butt muscles on the back side to open the front of your right hip. Listen for how your body is collaborating with itself right now. Keep your right shoulder heavy, the right butt toned, and then the front of your right hip. As you exhale, roll to center. Gravity will help you with that. You'll have to bring your nose to center on your own, but gravity will take your right hip slowly back towards that blanket. Here you are. Now you're going to take, lift the hips and slide the blanket just beneath your sitting bones and take the legs out. It's okay to have the feet and legs go like a little bit wide, a little bit like a starfish. Let the toes turn out there. Yep, good. And you might find that you, your shoulder blades rest towards the floor more heavily than they would have. It's possible also that your lower back is heading towards but not touching the floor. Will your palms face up? Close your eyes and let your attention come within. Shavasana is our pose for integration. It lets us be more deeply renewed mentally and physically. It also helps us to shed the unhelpful mental patterns, these like the outdated thoughts. And we shed the residue of stress in the body that comes from those sorts of thoughts that are unhelpful. We'll see if you can once again witness your experience without trying to cause your experience. You may begin that with profoundly relaxing your eyes and your forehead.
You'll watch your body getting heavier with relaxation. The places where your body touches the ground, you know, a little bit heavier, a little bit heavier. get a few degrees heavier with relaxation. Welcome the silence into which you are resting. Your mind can be at ease, reflecting, but neither causing nor coercing, nor judging nor narrating. Now keeping the body heavy with relaxation. Imagine once more the ocean when it's very still. And the seaweed doesn't mind, neither is it craving movement nor resisting. Invite your mind to be in equanimity like this. Sensing the heaviness of your body, the relief of Shavasana. You may also sense the expansiveness of your mind, larger than your own thoughts. And towards neither the body nor the mind, no craving, 
no aversion, no judgment, no harm. bringing some awareness back into the present. Sense the places where you are connected to the ground. Acknowledge them, the back of your left heel, the back of your right heel. Whichever part of your left leg touches the floor or the blanket, right leg, wherever you contact the floor or the blanket, back of your left knuckles, back of your right knuckles, the backs of your elbows, shoulders, shoulder blades, any part of your spine, sacrum, the back of your head. And you can lightly wiggle your fingers and your toes. Roll your knees to center and then bend one knee at a time. And roll to your side on your way back up to sitting. You can sense again if you were like seaweed, some part of you grounded at the ocean floor and you'll be able to flow with the currents of life today. Please bring your hands together at your heart. Om Shanti 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 Om Shanti Thank you very much, everyone. Namaste.